I'm Mary Beth Sewald, President and CEO of the Vegas Chamber. The Vegas Chamber is very honored and proud this week to have a gigantic delegation here in Washington, D.C. We have about 240 people. We're here advocating on behalf of our smallest businesses across the state, small, medium, and large. And we're very excited today because one of our guests uh, is our chair-elect, Mr. Paul Anderson from Boyd Gaming. Paul, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're excited to have you as our chair for 2023. And we know that it's a little bit of an unusual year because every other year we have the Nevada State Legislature. So what would you say are some of your priorities as we gear up to head into the legislative session? Well, I think the exciting part is we're expecting the building to be open. Last time <laughs> we were uh, amidst COVID and, and all the things that came with that. So this will be the first time since COVID that we've, we've had an open legislative building, uh, access to legislators. Uh, and, and I think that was lacking last time where the business community didn't quite have the same voice uh, as we could have when we get to meet face to face. Yeah, it was very hard, um, very difficult to to have communication with the legislators. Um, as a, a former lawmaker and business owner yourself, what would you say coming up in the in the next year are some of the you know major challenges and opportunities as well for small businesses and medium as well? Yeah, I think again we're we're going to have a lot of post pandemic discussions. Uh, how hard hit the business community has been uh, because of the closures and things that, that, that took place, you know, to keep people safe and, and alive and well. Uh, so a lot of those things are going to be probably highlights of, of what this next session looks like. Uh, education, jobs, diversity in the economy, all those things are, are always of uh, primary importance. Um, but I do think from the business community side of things, it's how do we get back to recovery mode? Uh, how, do, how do we see what the next launching point is? Uh, and also, uh, how do we make sure that, that the legislators understand how their decisions impact the business community and our team members uh, across the board? As a former legislator yourself, um, how is it having a, do you have a unique perspective coming back to the legislature in the form of chair of the Vegas Chamber? You know, I, I think I've been privileged to own my own business, uh, having been a lawmaker, and now I'm sort of in that middle ground of, of being uh, in a business position where um, good policy is important and I get to sort of balance that lawmaking and law enacting process uh, all together. Um, it, it is difficult, I think, from a legislator's point of view to understand that the great dynamics that go along with a policy that seems very simple and then putting it into action is, is, a, is a much different conversation or, or um, experience to have. And so I think uh, us bringing that conversation to the legislative building and helping them understand that these small decisions, while we may agree on the policy, we need to better understand how those get implemented. Well, and we're talking about the statewide level, but we are here at our nation's capital in Washington, D.C., at the largest chamber fly-in ever. Um, how would you say some of the issues on the federal level will impact us back home in Nevada? Well, first, so I understand we have about 240 people this year. So my goal is at least 241. I have four <laughs> kids, so at least I'll bring all four kids and make sure we get more next year than we had this year. That challenge I've accepted. Okay. Um, but I do think too, this is about, again, having a voice, right? And, and unless our delegation understands what's going on on, on the ground uh, with, with our employees, with our businesses and the things that we're struggling with, it makes it more difficult for them to make hard decisions. Uh, and sometimes very important decisions and critical to the out, to the business's outcome in our home state. Well, and as we gear up for uh, the legislative session, it's September right now, so we're already planning for 2023. And I know you're thinking about some of your priorities. What are just a couple of the things you're thinking about now that you want to accomplish next year? Mary Beth, I, I think um, you know one thing that I've seen lacking in the Vegas community in particular is sort of understanding the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, as a former business owner, having to find a place to go find those resources, whether it's for finance, whether it's HR, uh, just advice, mentoring, uh, could be coaching, what, whatever it was that you needed. The chamber has evolved uh, tremendously under your leadership and being able to provide a lot of those services. We have workforce in-house. We have the U.S. Bank uh, Partnership for mentoring. There's a whole lot more, though, of entrepreneurial ecosystems. And that may be angel funding. That may be some really very basic needs as a, as a business begins to start up and grow. I would hope that we can make the chamber that initial resource for businesses. And I think that becomes an incubator to help them grow and mature. It also uh, brings a new 
I think, perspective from the business community into the chamber as well. Absolutely does. It sounds like we have all in mind a whole new department of the Vegas Chamber. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that, I guess, soon. <laughs> I like it. All right. Very good. Well, Paul Anderson, thank you so much. We look forward to you being our chair in 2023. I look forward to it. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. Thanks so much. I'm Mary Beth Seewald.